Yo, what's going on guys, Skystimer here, and welcome back to another wonderful video on this channel, and in today's video, I actually have a top 10 list of my favorite Minewood items, and their uses. So if you guys enjoyed this video, as always, leave a like down below, and subscribe, and let's just start off with number 10. But before we start, I want to give a shout out to a player by the name of Gridlock5364, because he helped me out with the tactical side of this video, so thanks homie G. And coming up at number 10, the Diggity, which is an Efficiency 7, Fortune 6, and Unbreaking 9 pickaxe. This pickaxe is pretty much just made to strip mine, like, honestly. And also, it works really well with the Corrupted Diggity, which is Fortune 10. It's like, when you get to an aura like this, you can mine it with the Corrupted Diggity, get the most bang for your buck possible, and you'll be good. Never mind the fact it took me 10 minutes just to find a diamond. Coming up at number 9, we have the Infirmity, which is my favorite weapon for beating up orphans or unarmored players at spawn. It is very effective at this, mostly because of its Flame 5, Infinity, Power 10, and Unbreaking 8 enchantments. It also cripples the enemy, giving them slowness for a couple seconds making it really easy to just chain shots one after another. Infirmity also mixes with a wide variety of melee items which I will get to later on this list. Next up on the list we have number 8, Byronhild. This wonderful chest plate right here, it is Blast Protection 5, Fire Protection 5, Projectile Protection 5, Protection 5, and Unbreaking 10. But that's not the only ability of this chest plate because it increases your strength and gives you strength too, which makes it much easier to, you guessed it, beat up orphans. Yeah! With Bionhild, as well as the backstabber and critting, you can actually make your damage go up to 340%, what it would normally do. For this reason, people mostly use Bionhild instead of any other chest plate. And coming in at number 7 we have... We have the Fireball Spellbook. I gotta say, this is actually my least favorite item in the whole game because of how effective it is. It's completely broken. You can just launch giant fireballs at people. What are they supposed to do when you're launching giant fireballs at them? They can't do anything. They're too busy getting burned alive. I guess it's also worth saying that you have to be wearing some sort of rift armor to use the spellbook, but that's to be expected. But anyway, it is the only item that is more broken than Life Stealer. Let's go on to... The next number, I don't actually know what number this is. And a fun one coming up at number 6. We have the Nepenthes. This one doesn't need any explanation if you know what it does. The Nepenthes both shoots cat-hating, extremely explosive, high-speed monsters at your enemies at a long range. The Nepenthes bow can create space by blowing up a large amount of players at once if they are in a small enough area. For that reason, it is often used at castle. Coming up at number 5, we have the Zord and Zord Spellbook. The Zord is actually used to teleport forward when you right click. The Zord is essential for using one of my favorite strategies. I call it the Startled Ostrich. Pretty much all you do is just stick your head in the ground and they don't know how to find you. But Sky, you only use that strategy because you suck! And this is news to who? Anyway, the Zord also goes really well with the Batblink Spellbook because they have pretty much the opposite effect of each other. So you can teleport forward with the Zord and back with the Batblink. This confuses your opponent. If you're good enough at Zord and Batblink gaming, you can actually make your opponent pretty much not able to hit you with any kind of melee hit, only with a bow. However, you gotta be careful because a hardcore counter for this strategy is using a Torquem or a Sicario which a lot of players do. The Sicario and Torquem can wreck your day. So pretty much the Zord and Batblink strategy works a lot of the time unless your opponent has a way to teleport behind you. And coming up at number 4 we have... We have a pure staple of Mindwind PvP. The Dying Wine is a Sharpness 14, Unbreaking 4, Knockback 5, and Fire Aspect 8 Sword. It is often used by most new players because it's really cheap. You can get these for, at most, a Dragon Egg, but I've seen them sold for 
at as little as an ember. While the Dying Wine is seen as a mostly noob weapon due to its low price, it's actually really useful in PvP, and not a lot of people know that. When you pair the Dying Wine with an Infirmity, or even a Sicario, you can get a pretty deadly combination, because you can hit your opponent away from you, while also shooting them with a million arrows. Another combination with the Dying Wine would be a Dying Wine Mistletane mix, where you would actually hit your opponent with a Mistletane, and then hit your opponent with a Dying Wine a couple times. This can keep your opponent both away from you and within range for you to combo if you really want to. Mostly just giving you some mobility over your opponent. And at number 3. And next up we have the Avidity. The Avidity is a Bane of the Prod 6, Looting 10, Sharpness 6, this one's been sharpened, Smite 7, and Unbreaking 9. Also it was renamed by Taco Nacho Pie. At first glance, it may look like the Avidity doesn't have much going for it, but it actually does because of its looting tin. It has its own niche because it's so good at farming shulker shells, or any other mobs, but shulker shells, because it makes shulkers drop their shells 100% of the time. This boosts the effectiveness of shulker shell farming a million times over, pretty much. However, the Avidity is not used for much PvP, as you could clearly see by its stats. And for number two, we have a Mind Windows favorite axe, the Kaiga. The Kaiga actually is a Sharpness 25, Unbreaking 5, Knockback 3 beast that starves the enemy as you hit them. Basically giving them the hunger effect without the actual effect. I don't even think I need to explain how overpowered this is in combat because you can just be beating them up as they'll have to keep eating over and over and over again. Another thing that you could do, you could also pair up the Kaiga with the Succulent. This one's renamed, but pretty much the Succulent makes it to where your opponent cannot eat. So you can easily drain down all of their hunger and make them unable to eat. And it's pretty hard to regenerate when you can't even eat. Not only could you pair up the Kaiga with the Succulent, but you could also pair it up with the Sicario or Infirmity. Which pretty much makes it to where you can hit them around, make them lose their sprint while you shoot them with a bow. This is personally what I use when I PvP, and I'd like to think I'm not complete garbage. GARBAGE! Why, thank you, Wilson. Ooh, look guys, it's number one. This must be the best weapon in all situations, right? The Mistletane is normally a Sharpness 14, Smite 8, Bane of Altipod 7, Unbreaking 5, and a Looting 4 Sword. The main attraction to the Mistletane is the Cursing ability, which actually gives your opponent Wither. Wither damage is pretty much like setting your opponent on fire, except for they have no ability to put it out, like they're going to take damage one way or another. I have actually been working on a secret Mistletane project for weeks now. This sword will become the most overpowered sword in the entire server when it's done, and do you want to know the name? The name of this legendary blade? But anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It took me a little bit to make, so I would hope that you would like and subscribe if you're so inclined. But anyway, this has been Skystormer, and peace out.